Hey, my friend, and welcome to the Church Systems Bootcamp webinar. If you clicked on this link and you're watching this webinar, uh, it's because you're a church leader who is looking for the strategy, some wisdom, and some insight to help you move forward. And so over the course of this short webinar, I'm going to answer all of those questions for you, and I'm going to show you exactly how we've been able to help churches really make some significant next steps in their ministries. Here is our ultimate goal, is that we want to show you how to grow your church without burning out the leaders or using complicated marketing strategies. And we use a very simple process to do this. And this is our way of communicating the Great Commission and communicating the call that we have. It is gather, grow, and go. Because I think it's important that you understand from the very onset that we didn't create a brand new strategy. We didn't create something that just came out of nowhere. What we did is that we really just unpacked what's already before us in the scriptures and what God has already given us, the mission Jesus already gave us for how we make a difference. And you'll see that as we go through, all right? Here's my goal. In this webinar, I wanna do a couple of things. One of the things that I wanna do is I wanna make sure that we help you survive, right? So I wanna give you some quick action points over the course of this web webinar uh, to help you execute and get some quick wins in the next 30 days, right? That's our gift, my gift to you for watching this webinar. And then the second thing that I want to do is I want to give you an opportunity to thrive. And that's where I'm going to show you how you can be a part of our program and how you can take the next steps to really push your church ahead long term. We've got a program that we've put together to help install everything that we're going to show you and we do it with you you get to do it in a group of your peers uh, and we're going to show you exactly what that looks like towards the end of this of this webinar all right so what makes us different you know what makes us you know so unique because well here's our philosophy we want to see the church grow but we want to protect the leaders and keep their keep everything simple and, and that's why we use systems you know i've passed a growing church before and i tell you uh in my first go round as a church planter our church grew to 400 people, but it almost killed me in the process. You know, toward the end, uh, I was struggling with panic attacks. Toward the end, I started to gain weight at an uncontrollable rate because I was eating so much on the go. Uh, and I was just overall just unhealthy. And so what I learned in that season of ministry is that I've got to put systems in place. And here is why. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Systems carry the weight of growth so you and your leaders don't have to. Systems carry the weight of growth, so you and your leaders don't have to. Uh, we've seen several times uh, when we first stepped in and we started working with churches, how teams were resistant to growth mechanisms. And the reason they were resistant is because they knew in the back of their minds that growth meant more work and more stress for them. And so we wanna remove that barrier by putting systems in. And our systems come in three main categories, gather, those are the systems that help you reach and keep new people. How do we get new people to come into the body? But also once they show up, how do we keep them here so they don't leak out of the back door? Phase two is grow, systems that build and fill teams for ministry. So how do we build people up so that they are strong and mature enough to walk ahead in ministry? But then also now how do we transition them so that they can continue to fill the teams that we have to execute effective ministry? And then finally, phase three is go, systems that catch and release new leaders. How do we identify new leaders? How do we speak the language of the people we're trying to reach? How do we identify the leaders who are already in our church? How do we identify the leaders in the community who would be amazing if they came into our church? And then how do we create a mechanism to release them into ministry? How do we create mechanisms that allow us to trust people with what we're inviting them to do, right? So those are the things that are gonna make us different, right? So if you don't know me, here's a little bit about who I am. My name is Henry Tolbert, and I'm the founder and owner of Simple Systems Consulting. A couple of hot points about me. I am the grandson of a civil rights leader. My grandfather was a foot soldier here in Birmingham, Alabama, where I currently live and pastor. Uh, I have a Bachelor of Science in business management. I have a Master of Arts in Pastoral Counseling and a Master of Arts in Leadership, both from a seminary. Uh, I am currently the Executive Director of Good News Fellowship, which is a fellowship of 45 churches across the Southeast US, 
Puerto Rico and India. And then I am also a former church planter. I, I planted a church before, as I just shared with you before. Uh, in Louisiana, my wife and I were graduates of Grandland State University. We planted a church on that campus. We started with eight people in our living room. And in about three years, we had grown to about 400 people. And then I'm also currently a senior pastor. Uh, a year ago at the time of this recording, I became the senior pastor of a church in Birmingham, Alabama. And when I stepped in as leader, our weekend attendance was around 75 people. And, uh, and since that time, we have started to grow. We've started to see our resources increase. We've started to see the number of leaders involved in ministry increase. And uh, we've seen our weekend attendance greatly increase. And so God has done some great things there. And then I'm also a husband and a father of four daughters. Here's the point is that I'm, I'm like you. Like whatever your journey is, I can connect to it. I've served in just about every position in the church other than kids ministry and worship leader. Uh, so if you're looking for me to do those two things, I'm out. But I've done just about everything else. I grew up uh, in the Baptist denomination, but I've spent the last several years of my ministry uh, as, an, as a part of a non-denominational churches and things of that nature. And so I, I've been able to just really function in different places. And so I always tell you about my, my role as a leader because I want you to know that I understand where you are and I understand what you're facing, all right? So now let me give you a couple of things. I'm gonna give you a quick start blueprint, all right? So here's where I'm gonna start to give you some strategy. While I'm giving you strategy, I'm also gonna expose you to what we do in our program, right? So you wanna pay close attention right here because I'm about to give you some quick wins and some simple things that you can do right now to start moving things forward. But even as I do that, I'm also gonna be showing you uh, the strategies that we use to help churches just like you, all right? So here's the first thing, your quick start bl blueprint, is that you need a plan to gather people. One of the things that I wanna challenge you to do is to create a people map. And when you create a people map, basically what you're saying is, if a new person shows up this weekend, what's the journey that they have to go on to get from a first time guest today to somebody who is ordained or commissioned to go out into ministry three years from now? What actions do they need to take? What things do they need to learn? What journey do they need to go on, right? You wanna ask yourself that question. So that's a really simple exercise right now for you and your team is to create a people map. People show up today. What is every step that happens? They show up, are they greeted by somebody? Do they fill out a connection card? How do you get their information? Who follows up with their information? After they do that, what class do you want them to go to next? What do they need to do to be trained? How do they become a leader? You wanna answer as many of those questions as you can in a people map, because when you lay out that people map, it's gonna give you a huge, huge, huge part of the strategy for where you wanna go next. I'm telling you, making a clear map of where you wanna go next is about 80% of the journey. If you can map out where you wanna go, it's much easier to put staff and personnel and volunteers around it to make it make sense. You can even automate a lot of that process so that your church management software handles it for you, right? So, so you wanna just make sure you get a people map, right? And so within our gather, here's what we talk about. And here are the things that we address, the three systems that we cover. Because again, we wanna reach people and we wanna keep them. So we focus on a, a system for worship planning, right? How do we plan our worship services so that we leave room for the spontaneity of the Holy Spirit, but we have enough predictability that everyone on our team knows exactly what they need to be doing and what's going to happen? How do we do those two things, right? Then we also talk about our intake or our assimilation system, okay? How do we transition a person from outside to inside? I like to think of this as the acceleration lane of your church. When you're getting onto the highway, you start on the street, but there's a lane called the acceleration lane that helps you get up to the speed of people on the highway. You know, people coming into your church for the first time, they're coming off the street. They're coming off of a road where they're driving 20, 30 miles an hour. Uh, but your church might be going at 70 miles an hour because you have a history, you have a culture that the new people don't understand. So you need a way to bridge that gap. And we do that through the assimilation system. And then finally, invite, we talk about the evangelism system. This is what's going to be our strategy for equipping our congregation uh, to invite new people into the church. What's going to be our strategy for equipping uh, new people or be equipping our people to draw? How are we going to reach out into the community and get new people to come to the church? You know, most churches are only equipped to accept church transfers. And so we like to work with churches to say, no, 
here are some strategies that you can use to go and reach people outside of your church so that you can grow by conversion and not just by transfer. You know, I think there are moments and there are seasons, there are times that call for transfer growth. But we have learned over and over again that people who come by transfer growth typically leave by transfer growth. And so we want to focus on conversion and we do that all in the gather. All right. Here's your second step of your quick launch, your quick start blueprint. Number one is grow, grow. All right. Uh, so, so here's what you need to do here. You need to train your team for growth. You need to be using language and strategies that are built for a church 10 times your current size, because sometimes your church grows because you're prepared for growth. And so you need to start training your team for growth. Uh, for example, if there's a ministry in your church and that ministry has 10 people in it, you need to be challenging that leader to build processes and to organize that ministry as if it was 100 people. Because one of the things that becomes a bottleneck of church growth is when leaders are not prepared for that growth and they don't know how to handle it. It takes a different set of skill to lead 100 people than it does to lead 10 to lead 50 people that it does to lead 10. And so what you wanna do is that you wanna start training your team so that they're ready to handle growth, all right? So here is how we do it in our process. When we talk about growth, we're talking about systems that build and fill teams for ministry. So there are three systems that we talk about. Number one introduces a small group system. We need a plan to get people connected to other people, right? People on average need to make seven friends in order to stick at a church. That means they need to know, they need to have seven people who know them by name and who they know by name, seven people. And so since they need that, small groups is one of the way that we connect people together. Now for you, it may be Sunday school, you may have a midweek Bible study, but some kind of way you've got to help people make relationships, right? If, if you don't, the connections in the church will be shallow. People won't know each other, they won't connect deeply. And so that's what we talk about the small group system. Number Number five, our fifth system under grow is what we call include, but that's our volunteer system. That's how we include people in the work of ministry. And so here, what we're doing is that we're, we're finding out what people's gifts are and we're matching them to ministries that fit. You know, that's one of the things that we do in our assimilation system. We talk about how you can use assessments and quizzes and tests to discover people's gifts and their personality and all these different things. But then we also create a document that connects people's gifts to a specific ministry, right? So we say to them, hey, look, man, I see you tested really high in this gift. I think you fit great in this ministry, right? You set it really high. You tested your highest gift was craftsmanship. So you know what, man, we've been wanting to do a set design or a stage design for this, for this new series coming up. You fit great here, right? Whatever it is, we help them find a place to fit. And then number six, uh, invest. And this is where we teach believers that a part of their call as disciples is investing in the kingdom work. And so we teach them generosity. We have to teach people generosity. Sometimes we take for granted that people knows what it means to give, which is why I say so many churches are just geared up for transfer growth. Because when we're reaching new people and when we're reaching unchurched people, and even when you're reaching people who come out of church, you another church, you don't know what they know. And so one of the things that we say is we want to teach them to be generous. We want to teach them why we give. We want to teach them how to give. We want to make sure that they know all the ways that they can give. We want to do all of those things to help them along the path because we truly believe that that's a part of their discipleship journey is being generous. All right. Here's number three. Here's your third step on your quick start guide. We talk about go. You need a strategy to send people into ministry. All right. I want to tell you this. One of the greatest weapons or tools that you have as a kingdom leader is the ability to commission people into ministry. And so one of the things that you want to do is that you want to find and create new ways to get people active in ministry. You know, there may be some people in your church who aren't active because you haven't yet exposed them to a ministry or a mission that connects with them. You know, we're all wired differently. You know, there are some people uh, that, I've, that I've met in our church before who anything dealing with children, they'll support it. You tell them we wanna buy cups for kids, they'll support it. 
You, they, you tell them you want to provide backpacks, they'll give money to it, right? Their heart is geared in that way. And so as the church, there is so much potential for how we can make a difference in our world. And so what we got to do is we got to connect people to the ways that they can make a difference. We've got to connect people uh, to ministry because the more people we can send, the more people we can receive. The more people you get actively engaged in ministry, the more you're going to see it be effective for you. So here are the three systems that we talk about in this phase. We want to catch and release. So we talk about inform, which is our communication system. How do we get information to people? How do we make sure that people have enough information to make a right choice? You know, so many things in the church are, are not well attended because we don't give people enough time to plan for it. We've got to give people enough time and make sure our communication is so on point that people can know exactly what's happening. Number two, we talk about the Inspire system, which is our outreach system. And what we're talking about here is how we cr create community partnerships so that we have compassionate causes for people to support. There is a reason organizations like Red Cross are some of the greatest donation gathering organizations in the world. It is because they have a compassionate cause and they connect people to it. And so we teach you how to do outreach uh, so that you don't have to create it on your own. Because depending on the size and the season of your church, taking on the responsibility of manning an entire project and all that kind of stuff is takes more time than you really need to commit right now. And so we walk you through how you can partner with other organizations who share a mission that you care about so that you can begin to send your church out into the community to inspire the community to believe in the work of the church again. Many, so many, so many times the people in our community don't care about our church because they don't know what we care about. They think we only care about what happens in our building. And so when we communicate that we care about what's happening in their community, things change. And then finally, we talk about Instruct, the leadership development system. What's going to be your plan for consistently developing new leaders? I wish I could tell you that great leaders just fell out of the sky, but they don't. You have to develop them. The person who is attending your church this weekend for the first time could be one of your best leaders a year from now if there is a plan and a strategy to develop them. And so uh, what we encourage you to do here is to actually go through the process of planning how you're going to begin to develop leaders over the course of your church. And we show you a way to do it that doesn't cost you more than one day a week. All right. So here's number four of your quick start, quick start guide. You need a coach. You need somebody to help you lead through all the things that we've talked about. You know, I wish I could tell you that your issue is your facility that your issue is the kind of people that you have, that the issue is the city where you are. And, and so many leaders think that. And I'm here to tell you that that's not the issue because every, almost every leader in America thinks the same thing, right? It, that is not the issue. The issue is not that our city isn't big enough. The issue is not that we don't have the right kind of people. The issue is not that we need a bigger, better stronger facility. The issue is not that we need to do better marketing and, and we need this and that. All of those things can be barriers, but none of them are strong enough to stop the mission of Jesus. And I know they're not because we have churches that are succeeding in small areas. We have leaders who have gone into a church with a congregation that was stuck and stale and turned it around and breathed new life into it, right? We have examples of churches that have terrible building situations. And yet, because God is breathing on it, it's working. The issue is not any of those things. The issue is, is that you need somebody to help you through this process. You need somebody to help you interpret. You know, maybe as it is with many of the, the pastors and leaders who are already in our program, maybe it's a gift mix thing. Your gift is if somebody call you to preach and they want you to come and preach, man, you can preach them under a table. Maybe you come from a charismatic circle and you can, you're, you're a prophetic leader. And so you can just declare what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you, whatever it is. Maybe those are your giftings and maybe systems aren't. And, and here's why I'm here and making myself available to you, because systems are my gifting. Systems are how I express the apostolic call that God has put on my life. That's how I do it. That's how I lead well and how I'm going to make a, have my impact in the church is by helping leaders like you bring their vision to pass. And so here's how we do it in our program, because I want to show you how amazingly 
uh, valuable this program is. Number one, you get access to a training library with videos and breakdowns of every system that we just talked about. You get a document, you get a checklist, you get all the things that you need in order to do this system well. Number two, you get done for you documents. You get access to documents that you can copy and then take and edit for you. I have highlighted in all the documents in bright yellow highlight. Every time you see a highlight, take out our stuff and put yourself in. Right. Take out ours. Take out the, the, the dummy content, plug your stuff in and you've got everything you need to execute that system. Number three, you get weekly live coaching every Wednesday night at 730 p.m. Central Standard Time. I jump on a call with all of our leaders. And in that webinar, I'm going to teach you something that's going to add value to you for that week. But then also, if you submit a support ticket, I'm going to help you live solve your issue right then. So for example, you may come on the call that night and say, hey, we've got our church anniversary coming up in three months. And we're really trying to figure out um, how can we put this together in such a way? How can we do some marketing in such a way that we can really have the biggest audience that we've seen in a long time? And so I bring you on screen, I bring you on camera, and we literally sit there and plan that event with you and walk through it with you uh, so that I can help you actually do it. All right. Number four, this is a big one. You get access for five team members. When a senior leader joins this program, you have the freedom and the ability to bring five people with you. What does that mean? That means that I'm not just giving you the information. I'm giving the information to the people who need to execute it. Because if we're honest, as a leader, you don't need to be responsible for doing everything, right? And so instead, you bring the person who's going to be leading your discipleship ministry. You bring the person who's going to be leading Sunday school or small groups. You bring the person who's going to be coordinating your volunteers. You bring all of those people to that call, and every week I get to work directly with them to help them take the next steps. And then finally, you get me as your virtual executive pastor. What does that mean? That means you have an issue. You have something you need to talk through. You need some inspiration. You need some ideas then I am here for you. And so that means you've got 24 seven support via email that anytime you have an issue, you fire me off an email. And at my earliest convenience, I will reply to that email and connect with you. And we'll even have opportunities available to set up a Zoom call one-on-one -on -one for us to talk and for us to work through the issues that are facing you, right? So that's our entire program. We just laid it out for you. And so now really you just got two, you just got two, two options. Right. Because here's what I believe. I don't believe that you're just looking for the right strategy. I think you're looking for the right people. And a part of you looking for the right people is somebody who can help you. And so really, here's the, here's the truth. When you don't have the right help, you waste more money, more time and more energy on all kinds of other things. You waste more money on cosmetic updates that won't matter because the people you're trying to reach don't even know you made them. You waste more money on trying to do events that, that draw people to come get free stuff from you, but they never actually connect into the life of the church. Like all of those things happen. And so here are your two options. You can stay the same, keep wasting money, keep wasting people and keep wasting time, or you can be your best. Get proven systems that will help and will work for you. Coach, get a coach for your team and get a virtual XP that can help you take some next steps, all right? So, but as you're thinking about this, I know you're wondering, I wanna be very clear about something. In this program, it's not just an open free-for-all. We do not work with everybody. I just wanna go ahead and tell you that. We do not work with everybody. We are very, uh, we're very picky about the people that we work with. And there's a reason for that because we have learned how to recognize the people who have success in our program. We have learned that there are some leaders that no matter what resources you give them, they're not going to they're not going to see success cause, just because they're not committed because they're not all in. They're OK with the routine of showing up on the weekend, preaching, having a good time and then going back home and then just starting to cycle over all over again. And so here are the people that this program is not for. If you believe that church growth is out of your hands, this this program is not for you. Because in our program, we don't believe that church growth is out of our hands. We believe that the keys to the kingdom were given to us. And if we could, could make sure that we execute the strategy and do the things that Jesus uh, saw for us, we believe that the church can grow. And I know growth looks different for everybody. 
For some people, growth is financial. For some people, growth is strictly spiritual. For some people, it's numerical. But we believe that every church has a potential for numerical growth as long as there are unsaved people in your community. If there are no unsaved people around you, then maybe you're right. But if you believe that church growth is out of your hand, this program is not for you. If you want to be just like everybody else, this program is not for you, right? If you want to be the average leader in the average city, in the average church that's not making a difference, if you want to be average like everybody else, and really right now what we're discovering is that average is declining, is that the average church is declining. They're losing people instead of gaining people, even though the number of unchurched people is increasing in our cities. And so if you want to be just like that, this is not for you. And then if you're not an action taker, if you're one of those people who just wants to sign up to the program to say you did it and to not take any action, this program is not for you. Here's who this program is for. If you know you're called to be a transformational leader, this program is for you, right? You know that God put you in this world to make a difference. This program is for you, all right? If you know that you're called to leave an impact on your city, that when your tenure is over, that the people in your city should miss you because they know the value that you brought uh, to all the things that you were doing. And even maybe even to your denomination or your fellowship, you want to be that person who helps bring transformation to your church, the city and the global church, then this program is for you. If you're committed to building your vision, right? You know that the Lord has called you. You know that he's pulled you and you know that he's done those things and you're committed to it, then this is for you. And then finally, if you're an action taker and you're ready to start right now, this program is for you. Because I know that some people watch things like this and they walk away with saying, you know what, maybe I'll come back later. And later what often ends up happening is that they find themselves in a deeper hole. They find themselves in a deeper hole because at this very moment, just like you're making a decision about whether or not this program is for you, there's somebody around you who's trying to make a decision too. There's somebody around you who's trying to make a decision about which church to be a part of. They're trying to make a decision about where to find hope for their life. They're trying to make a decision. And we want to help you take the next steps to get the tools that you need uh, to move forward. All right. And so here's here's how we can help you. And here's how we can uh, take the next steps. All right. Here's what we do. We do a free breakthrough call with you. In order to sign up for this program, there's not a link you can click. There's not a button you can go to. You have to do it on a live call with me. And so down below this video, there's a button right there. You can click it and you can immediately schedule your breakthrough call. It's going to show you the days that I'm available. It's going to show you uh, how you can jump on my schedule and set up a Zoom call. And we'll do a short call. And in that short call, we'll talk some more about your church. I'll learn about you. I'll even give you some specific next steps that you can take. Uh, but if you come on that call, one of the things that we ask you to do is to be sure that you're ready to be a part of this program, to be sure that you're ready to step up and say, you know what, I'm ready for my church to go to the next level. And I know you're probably asking a question in your head right now. How do I know if I'm ready to sign up? I don't know what it costs to be a part program. I don't know what it takes to be a part of the program. I don't know any of those things. How can I be ready? And here's the thing. It's not about cost because this program is not, it's not about the cost. It's an investment, right? But, but here's the thing that I'm asking you to be sure of. I'm asking you to just be sure if you need it. Be sure if this program is for you. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is not going to break the bank. Is that you can join this program for a fraction of what you probably already are paying a musician right now. So I'm telling you right now, it's not going to break the bank. But what I want you to be sure of is that you need this program and that you want this program. Because if you're serious, then I'll be serious with you. If you're serious about this, then I'm ready to commit to coming alongside you and making a difference in your church. I want to help you and I want to help you build the kingdom and do what God has called you to do. So super simple. Click the button below right now. Go ahead and click it. Click that button. It's going to open up a new window and you can go ahead and get on the schedule. You get on the schedule. We'll have a Zoom call. Make sure you set reminders in your phone on the form you fill out. Make sure that you check the box for text notifications. So it'll text you when it's time for the meeting. We'll jump on that call. We'll get you signed up and immediately we'll work to go ahead and schedule your onboarding call and your onboarding call when you join the program. I'm going to actually uh, help you do some research on your area. 
We're gonna look up your city. We're gonna walk through some of the different opportunities in your city. We're gonna put together a report of sorts to help you see here's where you have opportunity to make a real difference in your city and in the space around you. But it all starts with you clicking that button to go ahead and schedule the call. All right, listen, I appreciate you for spending the last 30 minutes with me. I look forward to meeting you face-to-face -face on a Zoom call so that we can have a breakout session about where God is sending you.